Hey YouTube, this is Warren Marshall. Um, I've had a few people ask me about my custom pie menus in Modo and they want to know how I set them up and that kind of thing. Now, the way I do it is a little different than how most tutorials might tell you. See, I come from the school of thought that the UI inside of Modo for customizing your, your menus and your UI and stuff kind of isn't really all it could be. So years ago, I started doing this through text files. And so that's how I do everything is through text files. My hotkeys, my custom forms, my pie menus, all of it. So I'm going to walk you through um, just a quick introduction to how I set up my config files and how I keep them safe. And then we'll get into building a, uh, a pie menu. It's actually pretty simple. So the quick little primer I wanted to do about the config files is that this stems from um, years of scarring because it used to be you know a couple versions back with Moto. It's much better these days, but back in the day when something would go wrong, the general solution was uh, delete your config files. That was always the response from people, and it worked. But unfortunately, that meant that all of your hotkeys and forms and everything you know were gone bye bye. So what I learned how to do was to keep my config files in a safe place. In my case, it's my Dropbox folder. And then inside of uh, your config director, you can put a redirect file that tells Moto, hey, yeah, read all the stuff that's in here, but then also go look over there and find stuff. And it never touches the stuff over there. It just looks at it. You know, you can mark it as read only if you want to be super safe about it, but you know, we won't get into that right now. But the fast path to that is it, I simply use the system menu and tell it to open a user configs folder. And once you're in there, you create a file called redirect.cfg. And my redirect CFG looks like this. This is basically just telling Modo look in this folder, Dropbox, Warm, Moto, My Config. And uh, uh, we'll take a look at the contents of that folder here momentarily. Okay, so here we are in that folder that it, you know, this redirect pointed this to. You can see in here that I've got a bunch of files set up here. This is just a copy. So when I reinstall Moto or I have to get a new machine set up, which I just did recently because I just got a new PC. Uh, I can just copy that to my user configs and then I'm finished. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, inside of here, you can see all these CFG files. Uh, this is my hotkey file. This is my forms file. This is something about preferences. There's some old stuff in here too that I don't really use, but it's okay. You know, it all loads into Moto and Moto figures it out. Uh, one thing I wanted to note that I forgot about is um, this small handle CFG. You can have little... Um, there was no way to set this inside of the UI, I think, or maybe it wasn't saving it correctly a few versions back or something, but I like my little widget, my move rotate thing to be smaller, uh, but it would never remember that. So someone uh, made this up for me and I drop it in here and Moto just sees it, reads it and uses it. And it just says, hey, startup commands, make the handle scale zero. So there's all kinds of little tricks like that you can do, but anyway. Um, let's see. So my forms file, I believe this is the one we're going to want to look at. This is the one that's going to have my pie menu in it. And the pie menu we're going to look at is, hmm, uh, let's do the UI one. So, or sorry, the UV one, uh, my mistake. So when I hit my Q key, it, it pops up a pie menu. And these are all custom things that I've, I've built. And these actually call other pie menus. So if I go to the pack menu and let go, it brings up another pie menu that has you know, the various options I use for packing my UVs. So that, that command, actually, let me open up my, um, <clears throat> let me open up my input file. And I will go over this another day maybe, but this is how I organize my hotkeys. You know, again, in a text file, I scroll down to Q. 
And if I'm in the UV, uh, you can have different, um, uh, you can have hotkeys respond differently depending what viewport you're over. So I have a little bit of distinction between 3D editing and, and UV editing. So when I'm in the UV window and I hit the Q key, uh, I'm asking Moto to give me a form popover of WM UV tools, Pi. And what that looks like is if I go into this forms file, you can see here it is. Here's that same Pi menu. Now, I spent a lot of time um, uh, making Pi menus in Moto and exporting them and and shredding out stuff that I didn't need. Like it spits it out to a text file, but it spits it out with a whole bunch of stuff in there that you don't necessarily need. So I went in there and I stripped everything out down to the bare metal of what I needed because I knew I was going to be doing this a lot. And this is pretty much it. You declare the Pi menu sheet. You tell it that it's a Pi style menu. Uh, and then you can have uh, up to eight controls listed down here with list, end list, and the atom inside there to label it correctly. Uh, these are all just standard Moto commands. You can see if I pick um, pack off that menu, there's the command to open up the, uh, you know, the pack tools pie menu. So you can have one feed into another, feed into another, or just do a straight up command like this. Let's see, what else should I tell you? Um, I think uh, one thing to watch out for and one thing that really trips you up is that if you are defining your pie menu and you put an invalid command into one of the commands for your, your one of your eight positions, that can cause problems that, well, obviously that causes problems, but it causes more than you think because Moto will sometimes decide, oh, that Pi menu is invalid, so I'm just not gonna show it at all. Or it'll pop up with the commands that are valid up until the invalid command, and then all the rest are gone. So if you see your Pi menu doing that kind of thing, it probably means you made a typo somewhere. And when it comes to figuring out what those commands are, which is probably your next question, uh, the best place to do that, honestly, is to, um, and I have a hotkey, but I want to see if I can find it up here. It's you want to go into the, um, a command history window. This is the best place to find commands. You saw the command in my text file for, um, for you know, for actually opening up a Pi menu, which is this thing. Um, you just have to give the Pi menu a name and, and, and call it by name. This is opening up this Pi menu. But for these commands, right, like uh, you know, UV flip false and UV paste selection and all that, those are our internal Moto commands that you need to tell the Pi menu what to do when it gets triggered. And those are best done through the command history. So just go into the command history window, call it up to the palette menu like I just did there. And you know, when you do anything, like let's just, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? Do, do let's get into a position where I can do something and I drag out a cube I, I, you can see in the command window here we, you know we're turning on the uh, cube tool you would never guess this command in a million years right but this is what this window is for for finding out what to put into your hotkeys and your pie menus and so on and so forth uh, I'm I'm starting to babble a little bit now but that is the basics of it that that's how you find the commands pie menus can open other pie menus and one other useful thing that Pi menus can do, well, not just not just this one thing, but you can also have them execute macros or or other scripts like your Seneca Menard scripts or or whatever you might want to do. Uh, I recorded some macros for unwrapping UVs, and I've got it set up here. Just command, and you give it the um, path to the LXM file, the macro file, and it'll just execute it as if you had gone through the system menu and said run macro, it's the, it's the, same, it's the same path. Uh, this looks a little weird because it's got, a, I, I got an at symbol and then squiggly brackets around the outside. That's how the config file represents uh, uh, quotation marks. You know, because if you have a space in your path name, then it's gonna get all bungled up. So anyway, that's how you represent quote marks. Now I am gonna go against my better judgment and include um, my hotkey file and my forms file as downloads uh, down in the description of this video because I want you to be able to, to use my examples to define your own stuff. I'll throw my redirect in there as well because you know you probably don't have that. And uh, 
So I wouldn't expect this stuff just, just to work. Like don't just paste this into your Moto config because there's going to be so much stuff missing and so much stuff broken. Um, but use it as a reference. Use it to look at it, see how I set things up, and, and derive your own stuff from it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully that'll make you a little more productive in Moto. And uh, I expect to see a lot more pie menus out there because pie is objectively better than cake. Thanks for watching.